Good morning, good afternoon, and um, good evening. I am Dali Cardano Mani from the Philippines, and for the last few months, I've been working with my YSP project advisor, Dr. Priscilla Lanch, on developing a model suitable for an early algal bloom detection um, in my home country using satellite imagery and remote sensing. Okay, so this is going to be my outline for today's presentation. So I will briefly go over with some introduction on Earth observations and aquatic remote sensing, proceed with hub monitoring as one of its application, and then some definition regarding algal blooms and hubs to be specific, and what are the existing gaps in hub monitoring efforts in our country. Next is I will briefly go over with the objectives of our YSP project, which will be basically on the development of a suitable algal bloom detection model and then proceed with our methodology and our timeline, which will uh, focus on the study area. And lastly, I will show you some preliminary results that we have so far, like some uh, time series algal bloom data and some process images and potential types of blooms that we have detected. So um, since the dawn of space age, more than 100 satellites have been launched solely for the monitoring of the Earth's atmosphere. And most of it have been designed to support meteorological purposes or environmental monitoring purposes, and others have been more research focused. So Earth observation provides us uh, an effective way of exploring the physical, the chemical, and the biological information related to Earth. And as satellite observation technology develops, Earth applications through remote sensing increased and diversified over the past years. So basically, in this um, figure, you can see that uh, remote sensing uses or the properties of electromagnetic um, energy that is emitted, reflected, or diffracted by the sense object, which are collected in spectral bands. And these are just some segments of the electromagnetic spectrum. And you can just think of it some, uh, uh, it's a mean of one type of light. So um, with that brilliant technology, remote sensing and satellite monitoring of the Earth's surface have provided us a wealth of information across the globe and in multiple measurement bands. So as you can see in this figure, we have here a compilation of satellite images taken in multiple spectra bands. And we uh, this gives us like a whole earth picture of land cover. For example, we also have here a vegetation cover, um, rainforest loss, wildfires and smokes, chlorophyll concentrations, and others. So with this technological advancements, one of the applications I deem very crucial for most coastal communities and countries with vast coastlines or bodies of water, aquatic remote sensing, particularly algal bloom detection, is of high interest of mine. Algal blooms are phenomena characterized by rapid increased or uncontrolled uh, accumulation of biomass in an aquatic ecosystem. And these events can either be deleterious or beneficial, and they can be beneficial when they positively contribute as uh, the base of uh, the marine food chain as primary producers, or if they can serve as good environmental bioindicators. However, blooms that produce toxic effects um, uh, mechanically or chemically, like if they um, mechanically block the gills of the fishes or if they produce toxin, uh, then they are now referred to as hubs or harmful algal blooms. And these events are mostly associated with large scale marine mortality, uh, such as selfish poisoning, fish gills, and food contamination. So um, in this project, we focused on detecting the harmful ones because the Philippines has been a hotspot of hub events for the past decades. Also, we are an archipelagic country and we mostly depend on fishing and aquaculture as major sources of food. So in this figure, as you can see on the y-axis is the number of shellfish advisories plotted against time expressed in years on uh, the x-axis. So the first hub event in the Philippines was confirmed in 1983 and um, these toxic algal blooms are diversifying and increasing very frequently and spatially through the years. And with that, the country has experienced two main deleterious effects of HABs annually since the very first reported case. First is the consistent economic losses due to massive shellfish contamination and fish kill events from both the aquaculture farms and in natural environments affecting the fishing industry. Second, our health-related concerns and even mortality due to consumption of contaminated aquatic resources that may lead to toxin poisoning. 
There are existing hub monitoring efforts in our country, mainly through the adoption of predictive models that are heavily reliant on sensors deployed on site and on regular field sampling of the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. These are the sampling sites shown in the figure for um, shellfish meat toxin monitoring. However, there are several challenges in this monitoring efforts. First, deploying sensors and actual field sampling is logistically costly. Second, <laughs> Second, there is a limited long-term in-situ data collected by the sensors that can be used for developing predictive models. And lastly, the shellfish meat um, monitoring method uh, has its own sets of limitations like the possible release of um, bands than the actual have events. So with these um, considerations and mentioned gaps, this underscore the need to develop an early algal bloom detection model through satellite monitoring, which uses an easily accessible data, a cost and energy efficient tool, and sorry, logistically feasible, especially for remote areas. So to achieve the general objective of the project, we first identified a hub grown area in the Philippines, and then we collected historical data regarding the hub events in the area. And then we run some initial series codes using the Google Earth engine. Uh, to detect potential blooms based on the reported occurrences. So we are still in the development phases and we plan to do more image and data processing like and, and more quality control like cloud correction for further validation and application. So focusing on my study area, which is the Manila Bay, this is an area, uh, a semi-enclosed body of water facing the West Philippine Sea that serves as a catchment area for the capital city, Metro Manila, and um, the large agricultural tracks extending from the head and mouth of the bay. Uh, the eastern and western portion are all also highly urbanized and heavily populated, but more importantly, this bay, or the entire bay except near the ports, uh, is a major fishing ground, which makes Manila Bay an important site for hub mitigation efforts. So I'm now proceeding with the preliminary results of this project. So um, with the initial data processing that we did, we were able to detect two major potential types of blooms using Sentinel-2 image with spatial resolution of 20 meters. So figure A shows the RGB image of Manila Bay on March 28, and B is a corresponding process image of dark and green blooms um, through the Sentinel application platform. So as you can see here, there are two colors that you can see on figure B, and this just simply corresponds to the color of the water and the type of bloom. So the red patches are the dark blooms, the green patches are the green blooms. So these blooms are the dominant blooms in the study area, and there are reported cases that potentially this could be caused by uh, dinoflagellate um, organisms like Noctiluca scintillans for the green blooms and Alexandrium uh, species for the dark blooms. So focusing now on the green and dark blooms, we did a time series screening of these blooms from 2019 to 2022 to identify potential periods where we can look at. So to detect these blooms, we used the normalized um, differences in remote sensing reflectance values of specific um, band ratios, uh, like the near the NDCI or the near infrared to red, which looks at the chlorophyll content of the water, and the G, GBR, the green to blue ratio, with which looks at how green the water is. So results are shown on the following figure with um, monthly changes in the bloom area expressed in square, um, square kilometers over time, again, from 2019 to 2022. So of note, this um, data still need to be further visually checked for cloud shadow. But with the initial result that we have right now, we decided to focus on the monthly bloom data of 2022 because of the availability of recent uh, in-situ data for ground um, treating purposes, sorry, excuse me. So for the green blooms, um, starting January to April this year, we have detected consistent bloom events on the Northern and the Western portion, which are in the red patches. And these are, interestingly, these are uh, actually kind of validated by some shellfish bands released by the BIFAR or the authority that's responsible for monitoring HABs uh, on this following dates. And whereas for the dark blooms, we were able to detect massive blooms in the west eastern portion, especially on the month of May, which wasn't reported anywhere uh, right now. 
So for this results, we are still waiting for the in-situ data like actual shellfish bands, toxin levels, or chlorophyll um, data. And uh, with that results, this has provided us um, insights on how remote sensing coupled with in-situ monitoring could significantly improve our health mitigation efforts. So the figure on your right are processed images using our detection model from two data points from March and from June 2022. And these images um, show changes in water color through time, which can provide us information on what's happening in the bay. Specifically, remote sensing data can activate sampling strategies because they can provide, or, or the data can provide information regarding the onset and duration of the hub event, its location, and the size of the loop, the bloom, which are important in navigating and scheduling the sampling activities. And lastly, working with satellite data that is readily available for public use can contribute to the development of real-time and more accurate advisory and remote sensing. So this is my concluding slide for my YSP project. But before I end, I would like to thank my um, advisor and my mentor, Dr. Priscilla Lange. Thank you for accepting me as an intern, even though I don't have any academic background in remote sensing. Thank you for allowing me to explore and pursue my passion for space. For the organizers and the BMSI's community, thank you for making our summer full of fun and learnings. And this internship, I believe, will be uh, will significantly contribute to our careers later on. And to my YSP 2022 cohort, you guys are amazing. It's really great to debate and exchange ideas with you throughout the program. I hope to see you in person at some events in the future. Again. Thank you very much. Fantastic, Dolly. That was wonderful. Um, so for all of those who are tuning in, you can ask questions in the chat. You're also, during the question uh, process, allowed to unmute yourselves, and you can ask questions directly if you'd like to. Um, to avoid any issues, just raise your hand, and I'll call on you. Uh, Sanjoy, I see right away, has his hand up. Yeah. Dolly, thank you very much for your presentation. Is there a way to relate the spectral signature with the algal, algal bloom concentration, the biomass? Uh, I think we can use proxies, I believe, on um, in terms of biomass because you know the chlorophyll concentration can somehow be um, an alternative to check the biomass of what is in there. So if you have an intense chlorophyll concentration, that would indicate probably that the concentration of the algae in the water is high. Did I answer your question, Dr. Sanjay? So there, so there is a way to correlate spectral signature with algal concentration? I, I think so, yes. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for another question. I'll wait for one moment before I ask mine. Okay, a question for me. I, I love just seeing how we can use remote sensing to apply to studying our earth and problems we have here. And I'm really glad to see that you applied this to your home country. Um, you know, the taking taking space-based observation from around the world and applying that to your, your home locale. Um, how do you envision us moving forward into the future here on this blue marble using these data? Um, not just for the Philippines, but for anywhere. How do you see this growing in, in a really important way for the future? Um, well, we are, um, according to this stellar um, actor, we are explorers. So um, the space race will continue, we will continue going to space. And I believe that um, as we go with that process, um, I envision that we will be more um, um, heavily involved with using the satellite um, data so to maximize the resources that um, we launch in space and um, the, the, I think the ultimate goal for this is um, to look I mean for satellite um, monitoring or earth observations uh, to be exact is of course to um, you know protect our only pale blue dot and in, in in the universe so yeah I think we'll be get be more heavily involved in this and be more um, active on applying and maximizing the resources that we have.